Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Wednesday, August the 24th, 2016. All right, you're looking at the Bitcoin here. Uh, again, moving sideways, stretching out, elongating, just like just like I told you it would. It's in a positive pulse wave position, and still, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and test that 600. But even if not, right now the market's well supported around the 567 level, and so this one is still quiet. Not a lot going on. Um, so we'll see if it can uh, muster some legs here uh, by the end of the week. Like I said, the Fed is holding the, most, uh, the markets hostage. It's the bully on the playground right now, and it's just uh, it's just a wait and see mode right now in the Bitcoin. So not a lot of action, not a lot really to see or even talk about. Just quiet right now. We're currently at 5.7903. All right, looking at now the dollar. Switching our attention to the dollar, it would appear that the Fed is watching my videos and listening to me because today they defended the dollar, and in doing so decided to smack down the metals again. The metals is always the whipping boy of the Fed when they need to intervene into the dollar. It's just the way it is, nothing we can do about it. Still negative pulse wave uh, positioning and the US dollar now is trying to gain some kind of upward momentum but again it has a long way to go. Uh, it's, it's down pretty big here and I just don't know uh, how much or whatever they can do to, to stop this. They would need to attack the metals like every day and I just don't think that they're going to be able to do it. The metals are just so strong right now it's unbelievable. So I don't know this this dollar I mean the Fed has unlimited pockets they have the largest trading account in the world all right, make no mistake about it. The Fed has the largest trading account in the world. They can do whatever they want to do whenever they need to do it. Look here at the gold. For all the carnage that occurred today in the miners, and we're going to get to that in a moment, the, the gold didn't do anything. This is nothing. Being down $20, up or down 20 bucks in gold is no big thing. Not when gold has had, on multiple occasions, $100 days. So that's nothing. This is nothing. You would have thought that, that gold would have broke below this support and came down and broke below major support right here. And, you know, we'd be looking at some kind of carnage and total destruction of price on the chart. But we're not. We're still elongated and trading within this incredibly wide range in gold. Gold right now has a 1,000 point trading range. That's that that's crazy. That is absolutely insane. Okay? You have a thousand dollar cushion and gold's just chilling. It's just chilling within that. It's not it's nothing. This is nothing, people. Nothing. Hold your precious metals. Alright, looking at GLD, same thing. Same thing. Alright? The metals, the physicals are looking in good shape in price today despite what happened in the miners very interesting chart indeed this is very telling because it's letting you know the power that's behind it's pent up the energy in the metal in the precious metal sector i've been warning you guys about that i told you it's incredible we did not have any crash alerts and the physical no crash alerts for gold or silver futures whatsoever doesn't mean markets can't have flash crashes and pull back and do things, but we didn't see that today. We saw a pullback in profit taking, but we did not see a crash. We saw a crash and something else, and we're going to get that to that point in a minute. Right now, GLD is still very well supported at 123.60. There's nothing to scream about on the chart. There's no. Wh wh why are you panicking? What are you talking about? Look at that. Okay, here's the chart that everyone's crying about today. 
It's the miners. The miners got taken to the woodshed today. Okay, they got they 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 got slaughtered. All right, they they, they got hit. There's there's no mistake about that. They got hit, and the thing about it is the miners have been the strongest. They've been outperforming even the physical right now. But today there was massive profit taking on the chart. Again, this is not price destruction. This is not technical destruction. This is a healthy profit taking pullback scenario down the trend line support. Major support is all the way down here. This market can pull back all the way down here to $22.62 and still be bullish. All right, just keep things in perspective, okay? Um, plus, this is a trading vehicle. This is GDX, all right? This is the gold miners uh, ETF, or you can call it a gold miners index. It's a, it's a tradable piece of paper. You trade this. You don't buy and hold this. You trade it. What I'm saying is you don't have to panic in this, especially if, you, if you've built up a very sizable position. What you do is you take profits along the way, like I've been teaching you, and you watch for the price inflection points to get in and out. So you would have tightened up your stops up here, and then you would be uh, waiting for the market to take you out, which it would have done today. If you follow the trading rules, you will be out of the GDX today. You would not be long GDX. All right, so no matter what it goes from, from here, if it goes to zero from here, so what? You are not long. All right. If you're still holding, you're not following the rules of the system. And if you get your face ripped off, it's your fault because you're not using trading principles. You're still acting like an investor. You're acting like a stacker. You stack gold bars and bullion and coins. You don't stack GDX paper. Paper markets are trading vehicles, not stacking vehicles. Let's move on. All right. Looking at the junior miner here. Same scenario, pulling back down to the trend line support of $42.88. You definitely, 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 definitely should not be long right now because you would have been stopped out if you were using the, the tight money management stops that the system calls for. All right, so the pulse wave is designed to get you in and out of the trades correctly so you can manage your position. The only thing that's on the board right now is a short position. All right, the system got short this week. I warned you guys back on Monday about the crash alerts that we were having in the miners. All right, a crash alert means that there is something nefarious behind the scenes building, and it means that the market is going to pull back. It doesn't mean it's going to collapse. I call it a rally alert or a crash alert, but it doesn't mean the market's falling apart and going to pieces and turning into a big bear market. It might, but it does. That's not what it means. It just means to be on the lookout. If you're long, tighten up your stops. That's what it means. All right. There's nothing on the chart screaming bear market. That's what I meant when I said there's nothing on the chart saying that, oh, do you see anything? That's, do you see a sell signal on this chart? No, you don't. The last time you pulled back to the trend line here, look, look how much the market moved up. Look at that explosive move up from the last breakout. What are you talking about? This is the same situation here. All right, so you get short and take what you can on this short move and use type stops the same way we did in Bitcoin. The same exact way I told you to do with the Bitcoin when it when when it fell out of bed. The same. It's the same procedure right now. You're using the same situation. So there's no different here. Trading is trading. It doesn't matter the chart. It doesn't matter the market. A market is a market. All right. You can't be married to a market. When it's bullish, you're long. When it stops you out, you take your profit and then you get short. It's just that simple. You're always either long or short <clears throat> or waiting for a price trigger to get you in the market. That's the nature of trading. It's not about being right or wrong in the direction. It's about trading in the trend, the direction of the trend. And even if you're long, um, if you're wrong on the short term, the system gets you on the right side of the market. That's why we use stops. All right. You're not going to be 100% right all the time in direction of a market. That's why we use stops. And that's why the stops are designed to get you out of a, of a wrong position and into a right one. 
So if you were long going in here, let's say you missed the call to get short following the pulse waves, the pulse waves would have stopped you out of your long and then stopped you in the market short and you would have been able to capture uh, this move this week. That's trading, okay? Oh man, I thought this was going to continue to go up. Oh, I was wrong, but whew, surely it's good to be wrong sometime. Look, look how much money I made today. That's trading. Let's keep it moving. Okay, out of the two, the silver is much weaker than the gold today, and it's extending more into this down. So it, we're going to probably test this 1705. Make no mistake about it. We're probably going to go to the 17. But remember what I told you. The silver's trying to find support and build support between the 18 and the $17 range. Remember my videos. I've been tracking the silver for you since before for the breakout I've been tracking it for you back when we were in here remember go back and look at the videos go back and look at January's videos and look at February and March look at those videos and you see how we were tracking it I was I told you then where it was gonna go I told you I told you where it was headed I told you where the supports were along the way before they happened I told you what was happening I told you back in here when it pulled back, get ready. It broke out again. You would have caught that if you had the pulse waves. If you weren't following the pulse waves, then you know that's that's on you. You you take you take your trading account into your own hands. Take your life into your own hands. But here you go. So we're weakening. It's oversold though. All right. So downside could be limited. It may try to lock in uh, on a, on a downtrend, but it's way too soon to say that because here we are still trading near the supports. If we were down here below the long-term support and within the air pocket between the top of the Kumo cloud and the support and we were elongated up up in here all right then I could say okay we're, we're locked into this downtrend it's building strength and it may have enough strength to punch through the bottom of the Kumo cloud again a long way from that scenario we're not there yet the makeup of the chart is still bullish period looking at SLV all right, LSOV picking up that downward momentum too in the profit taking. Still an overall bullish chart, but we're in a corrective downtrend channel phase, okay? Downtrend channel, but we haven't started negative pulse waving yet. That's what I'm trying to point out to you. We're not negatively pulse waving. We're just in a correction, and we got this gap right here that needs to be dealt with. We can't do anything else before until we deal with this gap. This gap needs to be done, dealt with in the SLV before anything else happens. That's why I say I think the downside is limited here. All right, looking at the uh, the silver miners now, SIL, uh, same scenario. Didn't quite get to the trend line support of 4301. Didn't quite make it, and it's extended into the oversold area now. So I still think we're going to see... Uh, a, a huge breakout the next breakout I'm telling you I think it's gonna be a monster to the upside and you're not gonna wanna miss it if you don't subscribe to the the weekly post wave price triggers you need to do yourself a favor and subscribe right away get into the trading room right now so you don't miss this next turn of events because if you do you have no one to blame but yourself alright looking at your juniors here now as you can see it, it's moving the same as its big boy now to, as far as its downside is concerned. All right, we still have support at 1515. So support should be building around the $15 handle on the SILJ. $15 handle should be a nice strong support to bounce from and get this market up to that 22 target. So let's see uh, you know, how this plays out. But in the meantime, you got to trade what the market gives you. Right now, it's it's already gotten out, got you out of your long position, and you're looking at shorts right now. But like I said yesterday, you know, be careful. You know what I'm saying? You know, be careful. Watch the turnaround price inflection point, and you know that from your uh, your BS two BC on the weekly pulse wave. So watch that on the turnaround. Stay short. Do what you need to do in that area. But watch those uh, BS2BC levels because those price triggers are pretty powerful because they're the first, that's your first entry point into the market for the week. So just, just watch those. All right, here's the big one everybody's laughing about, the JNUG. JNUG treated people dirty. Can't get around it. 
can't make ex make no excuses about it. Can't you know? Can't dance around it. The J Nug got you. It got you. It got you good. If you were long this J Nug and you weren't using your tight stops, you got punished this week on your long position. Absolutely punished. Okay. When you're trading these two and three time ETFs, you got to be careful. You got to be mindful that those are leveraged instruments. So their moves are going to be way more exaggerated than the overall underlinings. Okay. You didn't see GDX and GDXJ move like this. But look at this thing. All right. It's three times the move. So you, you, you got to watch your P's and Q's on this thing. Be nimble, be quick, and don't get dissed. Now, in the trading room, system caught every bit of this one on the short side why because that's what the post waves do we had a phenomenal phenomenal day in this jnug uh up 60 bucks i mean i don't know any other system on the planet that's doing that right now you tell me we got people today in the trading room that were up 20 percent come on man in a day i don't know anyone I, I, is your bank giving you 20 percent on your money I don't think so. You need those pulse waves in your life. Here's another one. Look at that nugget. Look at now the nugget is not looking now. This is this is this is not good. This is right it, it rested right here on the trend line, that 10728 trend line, okay? It, it, and and it closed at 10666 below it. So it's it's gonna extend probably to the you know top of this Kumo cloud, maybe even get in the cloud. It depends these leverage ETFs are no joke man you got to use your, your tight stops you got to all right you don't buy and hold these talking about you trading with the trend these are really short-term trading instruments the nugget the dust the JNUG the JDS the uh, JDST you, you you can't think you're gonna hold those you know for any extended period of time all right you can hold them for a day or two stuff like that but you gotta use those stops correctly okay and you don't really have a gap right here, so I'm not going to call that. But you do have a situation where it could just bounce right back again. Remember, it's going to exaggerate whatever move it sees in the underlining. So just keep that uh, in, your, in the back of your mind when you move forward. All right, here's your JDST. You know, this thing just shot up like a rocket. Uh, again, you know, if you were trading those pulse waves, you would have caught this. Uh, you would have caught it when it gapped up on, on Monday. And you would have been filled on that on Monday. The latecomers would have got in on Tuesday. But bottom line is you would have been at least to be able to catch one of these bars here. And uh, that's that's what it's about. So, But now be careful though because depending on what the underlinings do tomorrow, this could you know easily gap on you and stuff like that. You know, just, just remember that. The inverse ETFs, I really don't like dealing with them but so much. Um, but... They, they're there you have to use them but you just have to be careful because they're they're designed to fall and you know only rise with you know significant moves of their underlining so just keep that in the back of your mind and last but not least looking at the dust same thing with your dust you know what can you say all right so that's what trading is about be you know you got to be nimble you got to be quick and you got to be able to do something about it if you're wrong in your direction. That's what your stops are for. Your stops are there to take you out of the, the trade with profit. They're also designed to take you out of a bad trade uh, with minimum loss. It's possible, okay? That's why you trade with stops, especially when you're using a lot of leverage or you're trading a whole bunch of shares. You, you got to do that so you can protect your account, okay? If you're not buying that many shares, you know, you're doing, you know, 100 lots, you know what I'm saying? You know, 200, you know, 200 shares, whatever, and it's an inexpensive stock. It's, it's no biggie. You can buy and hold it forever. You don't care. But if you're, you know, trading these uh, these big boys, you got to be careful. So anyway, remember, bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can, give nothing back. Be encouraged. Peace.